What's up Blockheads? Today we're going to be doing a test ride of the 2019 Harley Davidson Fat Boy with a 114 cubic inch engine in it. But before we get too far into it, if you guys enjoy stuff like this, test rides, gear reviews, you know, motorcycle content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon as well so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. So starting out, let's look into some specs and pricing for the 2019 Harley-Davidson Fat Boy. So this bike comes in two different trims. You've got the 107 or the 114 cubic inch engine. The 107 starts at 1949 and the 114 starts at 2449. Both engines are electronic fuel injected, have a two into two staggered catalyst and muffler exhaust. The bike comes in at 93.3 inches in length. Seat height is 26.6 inches, has a 4.5 inch ground clearance, a 30 degree rake. Front tire is gonna be a 160, 60, 18, and the rear tire is a 240, 40, 18. Fuel capacity on this bike is five gallons, takes five quarts of oil. Dry weight is 670 pounds, wet weight is 699 pounds. In terms of performance for the 107, it has 109 foot pounds of torque at 3000 RPM, and the 114 has 119 foot pounds of torque at 3000 RPM. The bike has a right lean angle of 25.6 degrees and a left lean angle of 25.6 degrees as well. And fuel economy is estimated at 47 miles per gallon. Both the front and rear wheel are machine cast aluminum. The brakes, it has a four piston fixed front and a two piston floating rear. And the gauge is a five inch analog speedometer with digital gear, odometer, fuel level, clock, trip, range, and tack indications. Hope you guys enjoyed those tech specs on the new 2019 Fat Boy from Harley Davidson. We're gonna go ahead and throw a leg over this thing, do a test ride. I'll uh, walk you guys through everything. Just kind of brief overview, looking quickly. Got the adjustable suspension right here. Super easy to adjust. Tighten up or loosen. Got the two to two exhaust. Absolutely love the brushed stainless look on this. You got the footboards or floorboards, whatever the hell you wanna call them. There's a whole debate going on on my channel right now whether to call them footboards or floorboards. You guys let me know what you call them. You got the oil-cooled liquid heads on the Milwaukee 8. If you guys want some more tech specs on that, be sure to go check out the video here. I will leave a thumbnail at the end of uh, this video if you guys want to check that out. You got the solid wheels on this thing, single disc front brake. You got some passenger pegs as well. You got the big old, you know, traditional fat boy styling to it, you know, big forks on the front. And then this color option, I believe they call rawhide. So this, uh, this bike is very popular because of the movie Terminator. It was the bike that was used in Terminator back in the day. Big old wide rear tire. You know, you've got your bigger front tire as well with the bigger fender, big old chunky fender. It just looks like a very stout, you know, stocky, like muscly bike. Gonna go ahead and get started on this test ride before it rains on us. And uh, I'm gonna be going over controls and all that good stuff. So let's uh, start it up. <laughs> Feel we are full. So just to go over controls right off the bat. Here on the right side, you have your on-off switch. You have your hazards up top. You've got your starter down low. On the right side, you've got your right indicator. Here on the left side, you've got your uh, selection switch. You have your horn. You have your high beam, low beam. Whew. Sorry about the reflection coming off of those front forks, guys, man. That chrome, though, very, uh, very bright. So yeah, you've got your high beam, you've got your low beam, and then if you press and hold down, that would be your pass light. So press and hold, that's press. So this suspension that's in these now, the soft tails, it's actually very good. Whew, <laughs> that was a bit of a bump to hit suspension with, but I will say right off the bat, the wider tires, they make it seem like, you know, not as nimble. However, that is a good thing. If you're on like highway and interstate and stuff, all those like little scrapes and ruts in the road, you know, cracks and whatnot, because it doesn't, uh, a wider tire doesn't set in those grooves and it won't pull you 
pull you all over the place. Oh man, look at all that rain. Yay, Florida. All right, so we've gone over the controls, going over the uh, gauge. You've got miles per hour in the big gauge here on the tank. Within that gauge, you have a little uh, LCD cluster, which basically tells you a bit more. You've got your mileage, you've got your fuel range, so it does have fuel range up top there. You've got your gear indicator on the right side, so currently second gear, a shift up, changes to third gear. Below that, you have your odometer, which tells you eight miles, well, nine miles now on the bike. So I press the selection switch and that'll change that up. So we've got nine miles on trip A, nine miles on trip B, remaining mileage, basically 156 miles until I am empty. So that's saying how far the uh, amount of gas that's in the tank will get you. Press it again, you've got your time. Press it again, you've got your RPMs, which I'm gonna leave it on RPM. In terms of ergonomics, you know, you've got these kind of upswept bars. They do stick out a bit. And then you've got these uh, these floorboards. So you're setting, you know, your legs are more forward. I'm uh, five foot, 10 inches tall. And this is, you know, my rider triangle. You guys can see where my knees are. They're not too far up. This is actually a very comfortable bike. You know, in terms of the seat, it's a wider seat. I'm sure there's uh, more comfortable ones available out there, but as compared to what I normally ride, a 2017 Dyna Lowrider S, like this is a comfy seat in comparison since it's much wider offers much more support so i guess just to give you guys a quick overview if you're new here of the bikes that i previously have just for comparison i currently own a 2017 dyna lowrider s which has the 110 cubic inch engine in it and then i also own i'm not getting that low <laughs> i don't want to scrape this thing and then i also currently own the 2018 Honda Grom, which has a massive 125cc monstrous power plant in it. That's a joke, by the way, for those of you that don't know engine sizes. A 110 cubic inch is about 1800cc, and a 125cc is 125cc. It's about 7 cubic inches. And I'm going to come to a stop up here, and I'll show you guys basically what that looks like in terms of the seat height and how it looks like with my legs coming down. Holy sh... Wow. Alright, coming to a stop. That is where my feet sit. So like I said, I'm 5 foot 10 inches tall. My knees are slightly bent. It's a pretty low seat. I could see somebody maybe like burning their, uh, burning their calf on the exhaust if you're not careful. But yeah, like that's, that's where my feet sit. My knees are bent. It's very comfortable coming to a stop. Regarding how the, uh, the shifting feels on these, it's pretty much the same and if you've seen any of my other test ride videos you guys know the shifting feels very positive it's a very positive click both up and down so when you upshift you've got this real just firm click right there you know you've shifted it's a good confirmation same with down the reason i mention that is because i don't know if you guys have ever uh test ridden a bike that has a mushy shifter it is just not a good feeling so that is definitely one of those things that you know it's good that uh it just feels nice, you know? It's like just one of those extra attentions to detail. So I'm sure you guys, can you hear that? It's just like this, you know, good click to it. Dude, this thing is a monster. So yeah, for the weight, you know, bigger bike, it definitely still feels nice. You know, with the 114 cubic inch in here, it's got plenty of power. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about indicators. So you've got all your indicators within this gauge. You've got neutral in there. You've got left, you've got right. You've got your high, flash. And then you've also got like the check engine light. You've got the oil pressure light, all that stuff. So one thing I will say is that whenever you're coming into turns with this thing, man, it does feel a little harder to turn. But that's to be expected, especially with the size of the tires. You know, you've got like a wide front tire, a wide rear tire, which makes it much more difficult, you know, to actually make the bike lean. It doesn't feel as nimble. So I'm a big fan of bikes with, you know, a skinnier front tire, just because it makes it feel much more flickable. In terms of like Harley shake, it doesn't really have a ton of shake, especially comparatively to my like Dyna Lowrider S. So within the Milwaukee 8, they've got the counterbalancer, 
which takes away pretty much like 75% of that Harley shake. I actually heard, I don't remember where I heard, I think I read it. God, this bike does not, it's not the greatest for, for turns, man. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember where I read it, but uh, I read that Harley did away with like 100% of the shake from the engine, but people actually didn't like it, and so they basically tamed it back a little bit, the counterbalancers, they went with like doing away with 75% of the shake, and so there's still a little bit of that shake, but it's nice because, you know, it's, it's part of the Harley feel, you know, you can feel that the bike is on, and it just, it makes it feel more alive, I guess, you know, does that make sense? I mean, I'm sure to some people this thing is maneuverable, but, you know, taking this thing in turns, it kind of feels just like slow and wide. Just cruising, man, it, it feels super solid, very nice, really smooth. I took this bike to Mexico one time. Harley was uh, gracious enough to let me, and uh, it had some really good get up and go. I'll drop a clip of that for you guys right here. Yeah, that was a good trip. Mexico has some nice roads, very tropical environment. <laughs> so even though it only has a single disc front, it's actually, uh, the braking feels really nice. God, I cannot get over how much it takes to make this thing lean. But man, it has some power. That's a great looking bike. I like the color. I keep on saying root beer. I don't know why I keep saying root beer, but I mean, doesn't it kind of look root beerish? It's got that really nice flake, you know, that glisteniness to it. Looks good. Overall, I like the style of the bike. I remember when I test rode it last year around. It wasn't really my thing, you know, like a big old beefy looking bike like this, but I mean, the more I look at it, the more I appreciate it. Whew. I, I feel it, man. It's close to, close to scraping. <laughs> yeah, lean angle on this thing right here. Oh, I thought it. The clutch does have a noise to it when I pull it in. It's like a squeak. Oh yeah, in terms of noise, stock exhaust. Sounds good. Not bad, not bad. You hear that? Listen. <laughs> That's a little squeak to it. Fat boy. Yeah, so after having ridden it for a little bit, this seat, it does feel like it kind of pushes me a bit far forward. I'm sure that's easily fixable. I mean, buying aftermarket seats for Harley Davidson's aren't that difficult, right? A lot of manufacturers for them usually. I do like the uh, floorboards, footboards. It's pretty comfortable. A lot of comfort in these Harleys that have been test riding these past few days. Anyways, overall thoughts, I think the biggest drawback, the thing that I like the least about it is uh, how it feels in the corners. It like really feels like it takes a lot to make this thing lean over and turn. Like I said, that's to be expected with the wider tires, but it does give it a nice, like muscular stance, you know, a strong stance to it. I guess that's the trade-off. But then also the trade-off is, you know, if you're cruising, like I said, those wider tires aren't gonna, you know, get stuck in ruts in the road and stuff. Overall, man, this thing's got just gobs of power. That 114 in there, lots of torque on this bike, which makes it a lot of fun to ride. Yep, lots of fun to ride. That about concludes the test ride. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If y'all have any questions, be sure to post them up in the comments down below. AA Ron, usually on the channel. He's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to these bikes. So if you guys have any questions on them, drop them below. And you guys be sure to let me know your thoughts on the uh, new 2019 Fat Boy as well. Whew, man, yeah, it takes so much <laughs> to get this thing to lean. Like, I'm almost scared to go further. It's a new bike. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to drop it. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Once again, big thanks to Orlando Harley-Davidson for uh, letting me do some test rides. You guys be sure to check them out. We'll link in description down below. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button. If y'all aren't subscribed already, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. 
hit that bell icon so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity and until next time you guys ride safe out there stay vigilant i'll catch y'all later deuces oh yeah and kickstands the new kickstands are awesome yeah.